Hey guys, welcome back to another Coding Flamingo video. In this video, we're gonna look at how to do role-based access in our Blazor WebAssembly application. So first, um, I went ahead and created some of the stuff that we're gonna need. Um, so this is all straight from the Microsoft documentation. Uh, I'm gonna link it down below in the description, same as the GitHub code for this. So if you wanna see the code or anything down below, you can always go there and see it. But now let, let's get into it. So I went ahead and created the custom factory that they require. Um, I put this under the services. And basically, if we look through the code, which you should always do, not just blindly uh, copy it from the documentation, we see that it goes through the claims. And then for each claim that it's um, a role, it adds it. Um, and then there's a claim. And so if you have more than five groups in AAD, um, it just says has groups. It doesn't give all the groups because there is a limit on how big uh, the tokens can be. So um, if it has a has groups, it'll go through and it will actually call graph. Uh, we already created in a previous video, also linked down below. So we're just gonna create our graph client here. And then we go and get all, all the groups you're a member of. And then we just add it as, as a claim. So then the the code can see it. So this this code will work for groups and will work for roles. In this video, we're just going to do roles, but it's kind of the same for groups. Um, we also need kind of like this, just is directory objects and like how it looks just to be able to deserialize it. And the same with custom accounts. And so that covers this side. And here I also added this part into which will basically add that claims uh, account factory that we created. And we also added these two things to, to also be able to create it. Um, if you haven't added the graph client, you would add it here, um, but we had already done that in the past. And then um, I also went ahead uh, just so we can test it out. I went ahead and added the role in the API, this is how we do it in the past. I have a video on this. I will also put a card up here right now. So also now let's go. So that's that covers the Visual Studio side of things. So now let's go to the, to the apps and Azure side of things. So for roles in the applications, um, you have to go into the front end and in the manifest and add this, I mean, for any type of roles and you can do other ones uh, for applications and stuff. This ones are just for users. I have a video on applications also. So if you want, you can check it out. So you basically create like what types are allowed. Then you the description of the role, display name and the value. Um, ID is just a random GUID. It's enabled, always set it to true. And the origin is the application. So in here we created two roles. We create a read write role and a reader role. And this is to show two different users and how it would look. I did the same on the client side because we're going to need that for the client side since this is a Blazor uh, WebAssembly. So if we go here and the client and server don't have to be the same, but since we're doing the same, it should be the same, but it doesn't have to be like you can call this whatever you want. It doesn't have to match the server because in the code, it's going to be referenced differently. But I also created the reader and the read write. And then in the so this is in the enterprise applications now. Um, I went ahead here in the front end and I assigned the roles for to two users, to my regular user and to the test users. One is the read write and the other one is the reader. And we're gonna see what happens at the API level with that. And we have to do the same with the client. Um, I haven't gone around and done that because I wanna see show you how it doesn't work without the client. So let's let's go ahead and run this. And, and in here we can see how uh, the Flamingo person has access to it since in here it has the role of read and write. And if we open with our test user, it doesn't have access to the API. So it'll just show empty. However, I changed the counter in the nav menu. So if we go here, I changed the counter to be the read write class. So um, as I said before, uh, they are 
separated. So now if we go here, we're going to do something weird and we're going to do in the client, we're going to do it flipped. So, so we're going to add um, the, re the reader role. Although this is the wrong code in Flamingo, we want to add a user and do uh, Flamingo. And for him, we're going to add the reader role even though in the other one was read write and the test user we're going to add read write so what's going to happen here is um, the test user is going to have read write on the client side and Flamingo is going to have it on the uh, server side so obviously in here you would want to match it so it's the same but for this test we're going to do it like this if we refresh it he still doesn't have access to counter. And if we go to test user, and we refresh, test user has access to counter. So that's how you add authorization at the API level and at the UI level. Make sure you don't do it like us and actually do it the same for both applications. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.